Hi everyone, welcome to another wonderful comics loving edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. On this episode, I am delighted to be joined by someone with an impressive collection of graphic novels as well as a lovely tapestry, and that is <laughs> comics creator Jared Green. Jared, thank you for jumping in and joining. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me, Jason. Well, thanks so much for coming back. I, I say back because we have a there is a lost episode out yes. in the interwebs of our first conversation with each other. So I, I'm glad to connect with you again and talk a little bit about the book that came out a few weeks ago, if I'm right about my timing on that. And that is A for Effort. Yep, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I think when we spoke last, I had I had maybe just finished it and it's like it was off to the printer. So and maybe a little more well rested <laughs> than I was back then. <laughs> I I know it's a challenge. I know that it, the graphic novels, from what I understand, are just quite the slog to put together. But I also imagine there's some nice reward in the work as well. Definitely, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of it's a lot of working a little bit every day, so it's not overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I really love it, even though it can at times feel like a lot of work. Um, but then it's really exciting when you get to actually hold the book in your hand, and you're like, "Oh my gosh, all of these scattered papers are all nice and neat in one little book." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and if it's okay, I'll put the cover right here in this sort of blank space between us, oh, so sure. that as folks are watching the video, if they're That's engaging cool. with the video version of this there it is they can check <laughs> out the cover as well yeah yeah uh, i also love the coloring by the way the, thank you the coloring design there, there's just something that catches the eye uh and it complements your creating style your drawing style very well oh that's so nice thank you i work really hard on the coloring and um I feel like I, I got really lucky in that I, I got to be a coloring assistant on a lot of other graphic novels, like mm -hmm. as I was sort of first breaking in. So I learned a lot. And um, it was actually some of the feedback I got for my first book when I was when it was still in the proposal stage was uh, there was an, a literary agent who told me that they really liked the story, but they could never sell it the way it was colored. <laughs> and I should think about recoloring it or hiring someone. And they gave me they were really nice about it. And they gave me a lot of examples to look at and ways to think about it. And it did kind of break my brain to try to reimagine it. It was colored for my thesis at, in grad school. And then to try to reimagine it colored a different way. Uh -huh. It took a little bit of time. But then shortly after I recolored my pitch, I sold the book. So it was a testament to that feedback. And uh, yeah. 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 Well, and that's one of those elements of comics and graphic novels. I feel like Pe people talk about the story. They talk about the art. But the coloring, the lettering, all of those things are part of the the presentation. All of those things are part of the art. So there, yeah. there's just so much happening on the page. Yeah, it's a lot. And again, it's another one of those steps that gets added to an already really long process. So, yeah. 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 Well, how did you know that comics and graphic novels were the space that you wanted to create in? What was the the draw there for you to the medium? Oh, my goodness. Um, I get asked this fairly regularly and I, I feel like I still haven't come up with the exact like perfect answer for this only because I've been making comics since I like specifically comics since I was a teenager and a drawing and writing like of course for many years before that um I think it's just kind of kind of a perfect mashup of my interests of writing and drawing and I think I I think the love of drawing was there first and I felt like I, I was kind of like a silly kid, I guess. And I was always joking around. And like, so when I started as a teenager working for a newspaper, I was like, oh, well, I can just write my own jokes or write the thing and make it, even though my art wasn't like super polished. It kind of was a way of putting my work out there. And I don't know, even if it wasn't technically skilled because it was a cartoon. And I, I was also like writing something that was also being stated. It felt like... Um, the comics medium is very like, I don't know, receptive to uh, a good idea, even if it doesn't have all the technical skill yet. Uh -huh. um, and so, <clears throat> yeah, I just started, I was just like making comics all the time. And I had an avenue to like put them out once I got to high school, working for my uh, high school paper and then my college paper. And, and I'd only really done like comic strips and single panel uh, illustrations and things like that until the end of college. 
that's when I took a, a comics class and I had to make like <laughs> full pages. And I was like, oh my God, I'm, wait, I've never done this part before. I've never made like big backgrounds and done establishing shots. And I mean, I've read and seen this in work like my whole life, but um, that was a whole new world. And uh, it felt really exciting to kind of graduate to a new level at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And uh, you also, you work in a medium that I love, but you work for an audience that I have a special uh, place in my heart for, which is the middle grades reader. I was a middle grades teacher for eight years. And so what kind of connected you with the space of writing for people at this unique age? And then your, your new book uh, also sort of tackles some of the, the move to high school and some of those mm -hmm. things as well. Yeah. Um, I think in part, like, I don't always know exactly where the story I'm writing is going to fall. And, and, and the publishing world determines that to a certain extent. Um, but I think like, I'm just like naturally drawn to that age group. I like story, like the themes that occur in like middle grade work, like coming of age and um, discovering things about your identity. Like I love, I love like, well, for one, I love drawing like big emotions and, and whatnot. And that doesn't feel out of place in a graphic novel for that um, readership, especially um, even if it's like a contemporary story that's like very grounded. I feel like the big emotions of being able to draw like big eyes or like a big expression, um, you know, a fit of anger or whatever it is, like it, it still feels grounded because at that age, those emotions feel very heightened. Mm -hmm. And so that's like, so in part, it's just like a fun thing for me to draw, but also I just naturally have gravitated towards those kinds of stories. I found myself like continuing to read like middle grade stuff, especially like as like the graphic novel market was emerging. Like I was just like naturally drawn to the stuff being made for kids and reading that and loving it. And even, <laughs> even as an adult. And, and then I feel like my art sort of fits in that, um, that age category very well. And not to say I don't want to make other kinds of work, but um, it just seemed like a natural fit. And the story ideas that I had really, um, really worked for that, that readership. So I've been having a lot of fun uh, working with middle grade stuff. Nice, nice. Yeah. Well, and as a teacher, I love to have books that I can put on the shelf and uh, graphic novels just get so much traffic for folks out there that don't know that are looking for something to maybe connect their readers. Uh, I have been just amazed at the way graphic novels travel uh, and how students are really eager for them. Um, so as far as your series, A-OK, -okay, A for Effort, um, any particular not message, but ideas or experiences that you hope you hope readers take away with them from engaging with the books? Oh my gosh. Um, I think I'll, in, I think for both books, there's a lot of like sort of dealing with dealing with different issues like privately, but how to sort of still find your place in the world and find your voice. Um, <clears throat> and it, it deals, both books deal a lot with like different kinds of friendship. Friendship, I think, is like a pretty constant theme in even my first book, which was like a fantasy adventure. Um, yeah, like how friendship changes over time and um, sort of the gray area of like, sometimes there's not like a big, a big fight or something. It's just like things naturally drift apart. And, and how do you feel about that? And what does that mean? And how do you move through it? Um, that was, a, that was in both books. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I think those are some of the things I'm, um, I've been exploring, and it was really fun to sort of play around with those and and seeing seeing sort of how Jay emerges at the end of each book with like finding his finding his sort of um, place among his peers and place within himself that um, that he feels like excited about and um, and the in A for Effort like he's also not just with his friends he's dealing with like sort of his family dynamic and like how does he kind of break away from like what's expected of him and, and still do what's expected of him, but also be like, but this is what I want for myself. Um, so that was fun to, to write about. Yeah. yeah. Well, and there's a, a semi autobiographical nature to the books as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's that been like to dig into and explore a little bit of your own experiences and then also have the creative freedom to change it up when you need to. Yeah. It's been really nice. Um, I don't know that I ever would have thought to do that. It, I, initially, I wrote A-OK -okay as a memoir. 
there was a different version of it. Um, it was very different. It was a lot darker <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, it took place at a different time in my life. And it, through some different conversations with my agent, she was sort of like, you have a lot here. You have like a um, this very like important experience in your life that you have a lot to say about. And maybe you should think about how to best reach people who are going through the acne experience specifically and think about maybe aging it down if you want to. She wasn't telling me I had to do that, but just sort of consider it. And I think because I had gotten it out of my system, writing it as a memoir initially, like then it kind of felt exciting. Like, okay, I have all the pieces of this puzzle. Mm -hmm. Now can I make it into something else that still communicates what I want, but also isn't like kind of a dark and sad and like negative book because I don't want to work on a sad negative book for two years. <laughs> right, right. Um, but uh, so yeah, so I kind of adapted it and I, I, I sort of brought my acne experience over and overlaid it on my eighth grade experience. So everything that happens in the book is true to a certain extent is based on something that happened to me. It just didn't exactly happen in the arrangement that it's shown in the, that's shown in the book and same, similar with a for effort. It's based on going uh, into ninth grade, going to a new school, not ha knowing anybody there, but then taking this, these acting classes that I took when I was older and like kind of overlaying them in high school because I did not take acting class when I was in high school. Um, and it's been really, it's been freeing and like combining people into like, like multiple people into singular characters. And I feel like it's been a fun um, sort of storytelling exercise to see if I can craft something that, that where I have the structure of my life to sort of help me out a little bit um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in terms of like planning and sort of story outlining, but then uh, being able to be having some freedom to be a little flexible with like, the order of how things happen or consolidating things down to make them like a little clear uh, in, in both drafts, initial drafts for a OK and a for effort. There were like way more characters. <laughs> I was always putting like too many people in it and because you you meet a lot of people in life and right, they all right. play different roles. And my editor was always like, OK, like it's it's getting a little unruly. Like, is there a way we can streamline this a little bit? Because we don't want to you don't want to lose your reader along the way being like, wait, what happened to that character had a cool scene and now they're just not even in the end of the book anymore. And so, you know, still having it feel slice of life by having a lot of characters, but not so many that you're just getting lost uh, in the story. Um, so yeah, there's been real fun, fun challenges with like adapting my life to be fictionalized, but still, still my guiding guidepost was kind of like, just make it feel slice of life. Like I just want it to feel like, you're getting a glimpse into Jay's life at different moments. And it still feels like um, a real, like true experience. Yeah. I love that. Love that. Um, well, for folks out there that want to connect with you, that want to learn more about your work, uh, particular web spaces, particular uh, information about school visits, any of that that you'd like to mention. Yeah. So my website is just my first and last name, jaredgreen.com. I, my first name has two A's. My last name has an E on the end. Um, but if you search for my books, usually my website comes up. You can contact me through there. Uh, if people are looking to do school visits, I just did my first round of school visits, which was very cool. Nice. Um, nice. And then, uh, yeah, then I'm on most social media, just again, at my at my name. There's a space between my first and last name. If you want to find me on TikTok, <laughs> where I post a lot of like drawing videos and that are sped up and a lot of the like inking process and stuff that I think is fun to share. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, I hope there is more creating on the way. I hope that there are some pages somewhere in your space there that you're currently working on and glad yes. to share about your work. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Glad to have you back anytime. Awesome. <laughs>